Good morning. All are welcome here as we gather for worship on this fifth Sunday after Epiphany. Our service begins with a time of confession and forgiveness. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, whose voice is upon the waters, whose mercy is poured out upon all people, whose goodness cascades over all creation. Amen. Let us confess our sin, trusting in the abundant grace of God. Holy God, you search us and know us. You are acquainted with all our ways. We confess that our hearts are burdened by sin, our own sins and the broken systems that bind us. We turn inward, failing to follow your outward way of love. We distrust those who are not like us. We exploit the earth and its resources and fail to consider generations to come. Forgive us, gracious God, for all we have done and left undone. Even before the words are on our tongues, you know them. Receive them in your divine mercy. Amen. How vast is God's grace. Through the power and promise of Christ Jesus, our sins are washed away and we are claimed as God's own beloved. Indeed, we are forgiven. In the wake of God's forgiveness, we are called to be the beloved community. Amen.
The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Let us pray. Everlasting God, you give strength to the weak and power to the faint. Make us agents of your healing and wholeness, that your good news may be made known to the ends of your creation. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. A reading from Isaiah. Have you not known? Have you not heard? Has it not been told you from the beginning? Have you not understood from the foundations of the earth? It is God who sits above the circle of the earth, and its inhabitants are like grasshoppers, who stretches out the heavens like a curtain and spreads them like a tent to live in, who brings princes to naught and makes the rulers of the earth as nothing. Scarcely are they planted, scarcely sown, scarcely has their stem taken root in the earth, when God blows upon them and they wither, and the tempest carries them off like stubble. To whom then will you compare me? Or who is my equal? says the Holy One. Lift up your eyes on high and see who created these. He who brings out their host and numbers them, calling them all by name, Because he is great in strength, mighty in power, not one is missing. Why do you say, O Jacob, and speak, O Israel, my way is hidden from the Lord, and my right is disregarded by my God? Have you not known? Have you not heard? The Lord is the everlasting God the creator of the ends of the earth. He does not faint or grow weary. His understanding is unsearchable. He gives power to the faint and strengthens the powerless. Even youths will faint and be weary, and the young will fall exhausted. But those who wait for the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings like eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. Word of God, word of life. Thanks be to God. A portion of Psalm 147. Hallelujah. How good it is to sing praises to our God. How pleasant it is to honor God with praise. The Lord rebuilds Jerusalem and gathers the exiles of Israel. The Lord heals the brokenhearted and binds up their wounds. The Lord counts the number of the stars and calls them all by their names. Great is our Lord and mighty In power, there is no limit to God's wisdom. The Lord lifts up the lowly but casts the wicked to the ground. Sing to the Lord with thanksgiving. Make music upon the harp to our God, who covers the heavens with clouds and prepares rain for the earth, making grass to grow upon the mountains. God provides food for the cattle and for the young ravens when they cry. God is not impressed by the might of a horse and has no pleasure in the speed of a runner, but finds pleasure in those who fear the Lord, in those who await God's steadfast love. Hallelujah. Hello, friends. Psalm 147 is a celebration of God's goodness in history. Listen to some of these lines from the psalm. God is rebuilding from the ruins of Jerusalem. God is gathering the beloved scattered who were in exile. 
God is healing all the brokenhearted. God is sending gracious rain to the fields. This is a celebration song. And to learn this song, you need to know two things. One is a Hebrew word. The word is yachal. Listen again. Yachal. Try that with me. Yachal. Yeah, don't be afraid to do a little ch right back there. Yachal means to wait and to hope, to stay, and to trust. Yachal. The other thing you need to know is this uh, little tune might be called, uh, in synagogue, a little song like this is called a nigun. A nigun, a little tune. And so this tune has a little la da 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 which I'd like you to participate in. Just jump on in. It's just a little tune. Doesn't really matter if you get it exactly the way I do it or not. Here's the refrain. Yachel, Yachel, we wait and hope. Yachel, Yachel, we stay. Yachel, Yachel, we trust your love. Oh, la da 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 Let's try that all together. Yachel, Yachel, we wait and hope. Yachel, Yachel, we stay. Yachel, Yachel, we trust your love. Yes, listen. Rebuilding from the ruins, gathering the beloved scattered. Healing all the broken hearts, counting. Naming each one, I Here we go. Yahel, Yahel, we wait and hope. Yahel, Yahel, we stay. Yahel, Yahel, we trust your love. Oh, light, 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 light. Sustaining all the needy, throwing evil to the ground. I, 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 I. Sending gracious rain to the fields, feeding the bear and the ravens when they cry. I, I, I,
The Holy Gospel according to Mark, the first chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. As soon as Jesus and the disciples left the synagogue, they entered the house of Simon and Andrew with James and John. Now Simon's mother-in-law was in bed with a fever, and they told him about her at once. He came and took her by the hand and lifted her up. Then the fever left her, and she began to serve them. That evening, at sunset, they brought to Jesus all who were sick or possessed with demons, and the whole city was gathered around the door. And Jesus cured many who were sick with various diseases and cast out many demons, and he would not permit the demons to speak because they knew him. In the morning, while it was still very dark, Jesus got up and went out to a deserted place, and there he prayed. And Simon and his companions hunted for him. When they found him, they said to him, Everyone is searching for you. Jesus answered, Let us go on to the neighboring towns so that I may proclaim the message there also, for that is what I came out to do. And he went throughout Galilee, proclaiming the message in their synagogues and casting out demons. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Beloved of God, grace and peace to you in the name of Jesus. Amen. I fell in love at first sight with our house. Actually, that's not entirely accurate. I had driven by it a number of times and dismissed it out of hand. It was too small, or so it appeared. It was on a busy road. There was hardly any yard, etc. But the first time I really saw it, the first time I stepped through the back door and entered into the small, dated kitchen with its one wallpapered wall and the L-shaped combination dining and living room with its many wallpapered walls, half-torn-up carpet, and frilly window coverings, I fell in love. And I knew this was my house. I knew it was my future, because I could see so clearly what it could be. I could imagine it as a warm, welcoming home. And while everyone I talked to warned me about the work involved, I ran toward that work because I saw what could be with some intention and some focus and some love. Where I get stuck, where I can grow weary, is trying to imagine what our world could be, what the church could be, what our common future could be. Can we create a warm, welcoming home for all God's beloved? Can we tear up carpet and pull down wallpaper and put some new paint on the walls? Can we even agree to do some major remodeling if necessary? Can we dismantle what needs to be dismantled? Can we let go of old grievances? Can we see one another as God sees us? Can we live with intention and focus and love? That's where it gets tricky. That's where I find it so overwhelming because where do we begin? How do we lead? What do we say? What do we do? How do we speak the truth in love? How do we act with conviction and compassion? How do we bring everyone along as we move into a future that is in so many ways beyond our imagination? 
Kristen Wenland, a professor at Wartburg College, in her beautiful reflections on our first reading for this day points out that these words from Isaiah, quote, address a tired and weary people who likely had some trouble imagining a new future, unquote. The people have been mentally, physically, and spiritually displaced and diminished. Time spent in exile has left them questioning everything they've ever known. And even as they return to their homeland, nothing is the same. Everything needs to be rebuilt and reimagined. The task is beyond daunting. How will they move into the future? How will we move into the future? There is a future God has promised on the other side of this pandemic, an opportunity for rebirth as a global community, an invitation to build on the incredibly difficult work this time has required of us, a call to discern where God is leading this gifted, complicated, willing, messy church. And I wonder how will we have the strength to embrace the opportunity to accept the invitation to listen to the call when this pandemic time has so depleted us. In our gospel reading for this day, Jesus heals first Simon's mother-in-law and then many throughout the city who were sick with various diseases. He embraced the crowd that flocked to him, and he cast out many demons. And in the morning, while it was still very dark, he got up and went out to a deserted place, and there he prayed. Everyone was searching for him. He was still very much needed. There was still so much work to be done, but Jesus went out to a deserted place and prayed. He knew what he needed. He knew where his strength and vision came from. So he stepped away from the work and he returned to the source of his power. And then he set out again to do what he was called to do. We, too, move into an overwhelming, beyond our imagination future with the power of God at work in us. The God who leads us, who casts a vision for us, is the one who continually creates security and provision out of chaos. God has named and claimed even the host of heaven, the moon and the stars. Not one of them is missing. Not one of them is lost. And neither are you lost, beloved one, named and claimed by the God of all creation. You are not lost and you are not alone. The way forward does not depend on your own strength, on your own understanding, not even on your own capacity to lift up your weary head and look toward the horizon. The way forward depends solely on the God who continues even now to create a welcoming home for all creation. And God unlike us, does not faint or grow weary. God's understanding is unsearchable. God gives power to the faint and strengthens the powerless. Even youths will faint and be weary and the young will fall exhausted. But those who wait for the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings like eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. 
for weary ones who so desperately need a new future but can't even begin to imagine it. God provides, sharing God's power, sharing God's strength, sharing God's relentless commitment to healing and wholeness for all this weary world. This pandemic has been referred to as a marathon as opposed to a sprint. And the marathon will continue even after we can somehow mark the end of this so difficult leg of the race. So we learn from Jesus. We forget the clock and step off the race route to breathe deeply of God's empowering spirit. We listen in prayer for God to assure us that there is indeed a future with hope. We walk through the aid stations and drink water and Gatorade offered there, the bread and the wine, the power and strength God sends to revive our wilting bodies, minds, and spirits. I took about a three-month rest after my initial burst of energy working on our house. The vision was still there, but I was tired and my hands hurt. I simply couldn't hold on to the scraper or the paintbrush anymore. And then one day recently, I remembered I had purchased a heat gun to help remove some contact paper in one of the rooms. And how good it felt to heat that sticky, stubborn contact paper until it peeled easily off the walls. How good it felt to make progress, to keep working toward that future vision for a warm, welcoming home. And then just a few days later, I was invited to be part of a conversation about climate action and specifically the Energy Innovation and Carbon Dividend Act. So often in my own weariness and inability to imagine the future, I have felt so helpless and inept when it comes to caring for creation in the face of overwhelming climate change. But this legislation makes sense and is doable and has had bipartisan support. And when it was shared with me by people who understand it and are passionate about it, who believe it to be a faithful way to work for economic and environmental justice, suddenly I too could imagine a better future for us all. I could see it in a way that I hadn't been able to see it before. Maybe you aren't weary at all right now. Maybe you can see beyond the bad wallpaper and the dated curtains. Maybe God is inspiring a clear vision in you right now. Lift up your voice. God is at work in you to strengthen us all as we walk this road together. But if you are tired, beloved, and the vision is not yet clear, rest in the dark. Put down all that you're struggling to hold. As Kristen Wendland puts it, quote, moving forward with joy into a newly created future that one cannot yet imagine may require strength beyond what humans hold within themselves." So rest this day, beloved one, in the assurance that the strength you need is coming from God. The power you need, the wisdom you need, the awareness and energy and compassion you need is coming from the God who loved this world at first sight and loves it still. The very God who brings life out of chaos draws near to you. The God 
who makes a way in the wilderness is leading all creation home. Wait and watch as God abundantly provides us with all that we need to move into the future with joy. Amen. Together with the whole church, let us confess our faith using the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven, he is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Guided by Christ, made known to the nations, let us offer our prayers for the Church the world, and all people in need. For the church, for ministries of healing and wholeness, for hospital, hospice, and military chaplains, for those serving in prison ministry, for all who proclaim freedom and release in the name of Christ, let us pray. 
Have mercy, O God. For creation, for insects in the grass, clouds on the mountaintops, for cattle and the rainwater they drink, for the humility to take our place among all creatures of the earth, let us pray. Have mercy, O God. For the nations, for all who lead in cities and towns, states and countries, for community organizers, school officials and CEOs, for international health organizations, that in these times of trial, fear, and hopelessness, they find freedom in service to those most in need. Let us pray. Have mercy, O God. For all wearied by life's burdens, for those who are poor, for those lacking supportive relationships, for those crushed by debt, for those struggling with chronic pain or other sickness, for those exhausted from overwork or stress, for all who cry out to you during this pandemic. Let us pray. Have mercy, O God. In thanksgiving for the faithful departed who were called by name and now rest from their labors, that their lives serve as witnesses to the goodness of God, let us pray. Have mercy, O God. Merciful God, hear the prayers of your people, spoken or silent, for the sake of the one who dwells among us, your Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. The peace of Christ be with you always. At this time when we would receive the offering, I thank you for your continued faithful stewardship of the gifts God has entrusted to you. Together, we do God's work in the world. Thank you for your generosity. Let us pray. O oh God, receive the gifts we offer as you receive us, like a mother receives her child with arms open wide. Nourish us anew in your tender care and empower us in faithful service to tend to others with this same love. Through Jesus Christ, our saving grace. Amen. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. God, the creator, strengthen you. Jesus, the beloved, fill you. And the Holy Spirit, the comforter, keep you in peace. Amen. Go in peace, share the good news. Thanks be to God.
thus it was, is now, and shall be 